How can you use Trello? I've used Trello to manage publishing articles on my websites, to manage content creation projects like my YouTube channel, and to collaborate with other team members. I'm gonna show you exactly how it works and then walk you through some of my sample Trello boards so you can use it for your business or for your content publishing workflow. I use Trello to manage my writing, to manage content creation and different parts of my business. And I'll show you a couple of examples of how I use Trello uh, in a few moments. Once you've set up your Trello account, you can create a workspace. And in this workspace, you're gonna create individual boards. So you can have a workspace for your entire company, and then you can have a board that you use for your own work and a board that you use for team members' work. So as an example, I have a board here for my YouTube channel, which is a specific project. I have a board that I use to collaborate with a team member, and I have a board that I use for my own work. And I also have a couple of other different boards for ad hoc projects. Basically, you can create as many boards as you like, but I recommend creating a board that has a specific goal or a specific purpose. So if you're unsure what type of board to create, browse through the templates. And there are templates for meetings, for, for project overviews, for marketing, for Kanban, which I'll show you in a few moments, and basically for any type of project or task that you can think of. Some of them are pretty simple and bare bones, and some of them are quite complex. And I'll show you what some of my Trello boards look like. But suffice to say, Trello is pretty easy to use. So once you've created your Trello account, go ahead and create a board. And I'm just gonna call this sample board so I can show you some of the basic features uh, before I show you exactly how I use Trello. And usually I create at least three columns. So to do, doing, and done. And that's because uh, Trello works best when you base it on the principles of Kanban. Kanban basically describes visualizing all of your work in one place, in this case on a Trello board, and limiting how much you work on. So to add an item to your Trello board, simply click on add card, task one, task two, task three, task four, and so on. Also Trello is quite keyboard friendly, so you can actually press or use keyboard shortcuts to add these items uh, as well. So as an example, if I press N, it will give me an option to paste in a new title or add a link for an individual card. When I'm ready to work on one of them, I'll just simply select it with my mouse or with my keyboard and drag it over to doing. And usually I'll only limit myself to two or three uh, tasks at any one time in the doing column. And then when I finish the task, I'll drag it over to, you guessed it, done. You can click on any of the cards on your Trello board and add lots of juicy things, which will help you see what you're working on and get more done. So firstly, you will see the join option. So if you've created a Trello board that other team members are working on or a member of, you can click on join and then watch individual cards. And this will add a fancy little icon that represents you or a team member. And if the card isn't relevant to what you're working on, you can just leave the card in question. You can also click on members and you can add members by searching for other people who are in your Trello workspace. So basically, add all of your employees to your Trello workspace and then tag them if you want them to work on individual cards. You can use labels. So sometimes I'll use uh, custom labels for specific Trello projects. So as an example, I have a custom Trello board for YouTube and sometimes I'll add the label needs thumbnail if I wanna get a thumbnail for a video. Or when I was running a podcast, I had a custom label get cover art. And basically this would just enable me to see at a glance if I was missing something for a specific Trello card. Another option is to use checklists. So for a while I used Trello to manage the publication of oh, several hundred articles across a series of niche websites that I ran. So I used a pre-publication checklist and basically a team member would review this checklist uh, each time she published an article or before she published an article to make sure we had done everything. And then when we had done everything, she would click publish in WordPress. Uh, so, th so this can be quite good if you have standard operating procedures for your content or for your business and you want other people to follow them. Uh, Trello also supports attachments. So you can actually link to other Trello cards, which is quite good. Uh, or alternatively, another option is simply to uh, upload your attachment. And something nifty happens when you upload your attachment. So, so here's a book cover for one of my books. So if I upload this particular file, and I can do the same with P PDFs as well, you'll see it adds it as a cover image. Uh, and then if I scroll uh, further down, I have some options for custom fields. So these are basically for advanced customization options uh, for your Trello cards, which I won't cover in this video. You can also add power-ups. So power-ups are basically a, well, power-ups from Trello and from third-party companies that add additional functionality. So as an example, you can turn your Trello cards into a calendar view. So I have that set up and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. 
You can add dash cards, which will help you keep track of the amount of uh, Trello cards that you have in any one column. So sometimes I will use this and I'll show you what that looks like uh, in a moment for another Trello board. And there are other basically power-ups that you can use for integrating Trello with apps like Airtable, Notion, uh, and so on. Let's say you have a Trello card that you're using for publication for publishing articles on your website. You could turn this into a template and then you can click on this button to duplicate this template uh, for your workflow. So as you can see, Trello is quite customizable, but I still recommend keeping things simple. So start with three columns, to do, doing, and done. At the start of the day or the start of the week, uh, drag a few cards to the doing column. So you're visualizing all of your work, you're limiting how much you're working on. And then as the week progresses or the month or depending on the project, drag it over to done. Basically your work is moving from left to right. Now sometimes I will add some additional columns. So sometimes I'll add a column called waiting for and another one called Sunday maybe. So let's say I wanted a new book cover for this particular uh, card and I briefed that into a designer I'll drag this over to waiting for, and I might leave a note to myself or team members saying with book cover designer. And that way I can see that this uh, task or this item is with somebody else before I can action it any further. Um, if they are a member of the board, I would just tag them on the board rather than leaving this comment. Uh, and as for someday, maybe sometimes I'll add items that I may potentially work on, but I don't have time or energy resources to do at the moment. So as an example, let's say I wanted to write a blog post about using Trello and Notion. My thesis is I could get some traffic from that blog post, but perhaps it's not relevant and I'm not really sure, but I don't want to lose track of the idea. Well, rather than have it in, in the to-do column, I'll simply drag it to some name maybe, and then at some point they can always pull it back and put it into my production workflow. The description field inside of Trello is quite customizable, and I like this quite a lot because sometimes I'll write up a draft of an email and just simply drop it in here and format it, or I'll write up formatted instructions for somebody who's working on the card. So as an example, I can put in heading one, then I can select it, change it to heading one, heading two, heading three, and so on. Or alternatively, I can use markdown. So I can put in heading two, put in two hashtags before the heading two text, and it'll automatically change it to heading two. And of course, I can easily put in uh, bold and italics items, and then turn them into a bullet point or bullet list or numbered list. I can also add images from external URLs or just simply drop them in. Uh, and also at any point I can work almost like a coder. So if I press the forward slash, I get access to this picker. So I can mention other people who are on the Trello board, drop in an image, use an emoji, add a code snippet if I don't want Trello to format my text uh, or basically add a divider or a quote or whatever it is. So you can have really rich and fancy looking items or descriptions on individual Trello cards. It's pretty easy to customize your boards as well. So you can click on change background and you can search for photos that are freely available from Unsplash or you can simply use basic colors. And basically I'll give each one of my boards, you know, a distinct look and feel so I can recognize them at a glance when I'm in my Trello workspace. So I'm gonna go back to my Trello workspace so you can see it. So here are the current Trello boards that I have for my business and each one is easily recognizable. Uh, and if you have lots of different boards, it's also quite easy to find items inside of the Trello workspace or inside of any Trello board by using search. So if I search for an item, uh, it will show me all of the different Trello cards inside of my Trello workspace and I can click on any one of these and it'll take me straight through to the card uh, in question. You can also go to your feed so if you have a lot of cards and a lot of team members, you can see everything uh, as a type of feed. And then you can just basically scroll down through this and reply to the items that you've been tagged on or give an emoji or tick things off uh, one by one. So at one point when I was running a lot of niche websites and I had employed a lot of freelance writers, I did spend more time on this feed rather than inside individual uh, Trello boards. Now, if at the end of the week, I end up with a lot of items in the done column, I usually like to clean them up. So I'll simply click on the three ellipses and I'll select archive this list or archive all cards in this list. So if I click archive this list, it'll actually get rid of the done column altogether. So no, I don't want to do that. So instead I'm going to click on archive all cards in this list. Uh, and of course, if I want to bring anything back, I can simply click on the three ellipses and then click on activity. And then I can click on the individual cards and I can delete them permanently or I can restore them 
back to my list by clicking on send to board. Uh, and if you do archive something, it is findable in search uh, as well. Um, so what I recommend doing is, you know, once per week or once every two weeks, clean up your Trello board so you can uh, review things uh, much easier. Or if you really don't want to archive them, you could just collapse the list and create an archive list instead. So like I said, Trello is customizable. Uh, you can also create a rule as well with Trello. So rules are as powerful or as simple as you like. Uh, so you could create a rule or an automation whereby every Friday, Trello will archive everything that's in the done column. So you don't actually have to manually do it. Uh, or you could create a rule uh, where if a team member moves a card to done, you're automatically tagged on the card and then you can review it and then archive it yourself. Um, so sometimes I do use rules, but personally, I just prefer reviewing cards manually. I'm going to show you some use cases for Trello. So I run a daily newsletter. I send a newsletter to subscribers over at Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, Collins.com. All about insights about how you can grow a profitable content business. So if you want to join the newsletter, do head over and opt in. Anyway, writing a daily newsletter basically means planning my emails in advance and working with somebody who helps me schedule and publish them. Because I'd rather write my emails than be messing around inside of my email marketing provider. So basically, sometimes I'll come up with an idea for an email. And then when I, I will go ahead and write the email in Google Docs or some other tool. Uh, and then when I'm happy with the email in question, I'll just simply drop in the Google Doc link. I'll drag it to ready for scheduling. A team member will pick that up. They'll put on a due date uh, for the email based on a calendar that we've worked out. And then when they're working on it, they'll drag it to, to doing. And then when the email is scheduled, they will drag it to the scheduled column. And then when it's all done, we'll just move it over to done. Now, I mentioned some power-ups uh, a few moments ago. So I have the calendar power-up enabled for this particular Trello board. So when I click on calendar power-up, this happens. Basically, I can see each of my emails that are scheduled and when they're going out. So I use this as a type of editorial calendar. And I can click on any one of these cards at any one time to go into the individual card and see what's happening with it. So as an example, there's a question here from a team member saying there's no subject line. So I dropped in the subject line and she gave me a, a thumbs up. Um, and I find this is quite good basically for planning my content for my newsletter uh, in advance. So this year I wanted to publish more YouTube videos on the channel. So to help me manage the process, I created a dedicated Trello board. So it's based on the principles of Kanban with a few additional options. So in to-do, I'll put my ideas for videos. Sometimes I'll have notes about the video that I want to record here. Other times I'll simply drop in a link to a Google Doc or to an outline of the video in question. Then when I'm planning what videos I'm going to record, and I like to record two or three videos at any one go, I'll drag it to next up. So these are, these are basically videos that I have the script for, or perhaps I have the cover image for, and which are ready to work on whenever I'm going to turn on my camera. And then I'll drag over two of the cards when I'm actually working on a video on a given day to the doing column. So basically I'm limiting how many uh, projects I'm work or tasks I'm working on at any one time. And then when it's finished, I'll drag it to ready. And that signals to an editor that they should pick up the video and start editing it. And then you'll see that I've added an additional column, need image from William. So William is a thumbnail designer and the theme member will tag William if the video needs a thumbnail. And then once it's done, so you can see here, here's one that has a thumbnail. I'll drag it over to done. And that means it's ready to go up onto YouTube. And then I'll add it to YouTube or a team member will add it to YouTube. I also added some additional columns, so resources. So if there are things that I want to reference for this project, waiting for, so sometimes perhaps I'm waiting to finish the video because a third party needs to get back to me about something. Uh, and then someday maybe, which are video ideas that I may record, but I'm not quite convinced they're worth the time at the moment. I work with a lot of people remotely and I find Trello boards are great if people are in different time zones and if you don't want to spend all your days on Zoom calls. So here's an example of a Trello board that I've set up for a team member. So I'll just add the uh, request to the to-do column and I'll put in some details or a, perhaps a Loom video or documentation about what I'd like her to work on. And then when she's picked up the task, she'll drag it over to doing. So as an example, I'm currently working on a project for a coffee website that I built a few years ago. And I want to build out an email sequence or welcome sequence for new subscribers. So I've provided some example emails as attachments and I provided a checklist that represents the types of topics we should cover in the welcome sequence. 
Uh, and I've also provided uh, some specific instructions uh, in a PDF about what the team members should do to build out this specific welcome sequence. I'm also trying to get Pinterest traffic to the coffee website. So I have a card here about Pinterest uh, and then I have some other cards that she's working on as well. Now I created a custom column called ongoing. So these are things that the team member is doing every week. And then I have a column here called Whip Brian. So if the team member needs something from me, she'll drag it to Whip Brian and then I'll review it and dra then drag it back to, to do doing or I'll tag the team member. And then over in the done section, I can quickly review all of the things we got through in a given week. Uh, and sometimes I'll add resources for specific projects here. At one point I used Trello to manage publishing over 100 articles per month across my niche or content websites. And basically I created a dedicated Trello board for each website. And then I gave a team member access to the Trello board in question. So when I came up with an idea or a brief for an article, I put in the brief in the description and then I tag the author in question. And then when they were picking it up, they'd simply drag it to the doing section. When the article was finished, it would be dragged to Brian to check uh, or an editor to check. So one of us would review the article in question. Then if there were edits for the author, they would uh, act on them here. And then finally we'll go over to done. And then somebody who was publishing the article on my site uh, would pick it up. As a lot of people use this Trello board, I relied on checklists and standard operating procedures to make sure everybody was in the same place. So as an example, here is an editing checklist that I created for each one of these Trello cards. So general copy edit by an editor, add two to three external links, add two to three internal links, redo the introduction as per an SOP, add a synopsis, cut filler, update the H1s and so on. And basically I had briefed the editor about what each of these checklist items represented. And then she would simply tick these off one by one before the article was published on my site. If you have a lot of Trello boards, I'd also recommend starring ones that you use frequently. So as an example, this is a Trello board that I use for things that I need to do myself rather than giving to a team member. So I have this Trello board starred and now I can quickly uh, access it on the mobile app or basically on the left hand side column uh, because it's starred. So it basically goes to the top of my list of Trello boards. And like I said, when I had dozens of Trello boards, I did star the most important ones. Depending on what version of Trello you've signed up for, you can actually have a table that will show you every single card across all of your Trello boards. I did experiment with this, but it, I didn't find it very valuable. But if you have a lot of team members and you have a lot of projects you're working on, you could see everything here in a type of Gantt chart or table. Uh, and if you have the calendar enabled on specific Trello boards and you have due dates, you can see all of the due dates pulled into a type of meta calendar. So basically you can see what everybody's working on and what their due dates are and their assignments. Um, again, but for solopreneurs or for small business owners or small teams, the uh, pro version of Trello is probably just fine and you don't really need these uh, expensive workspace views. So basically with the free version of Trello, you can pretty much do everything I've covered in this video. You can create up to 10 different boards, which is probably more than enough for a small business owner or a solopreneur. Uh, now, if you take out the standard subscription for $5, you can create as many boards as you want. And you can also add larger attachments to your uh, Trello cards. Uh, so I did find I was hitting the attachment size quite quickly when it was on the free version. So I quickly upgraded to standard. Now, with the premium version, you get access to some advanced features like the calendar across all of your boards, a timeline, a dashboard, and so on. To be honest, you only probably need this if you have lots of different team members and dozens of different boards. Uh, and obviously enterprise is probably more suitable for people with dozens of different users. Uh, so in summary, you can do everything I've showed you in the video with the free version. Although if you're gonna start using attachments, then you may want to consider upgrading to standard. That's my overview of how to use Trello. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments section below this video. And I'll also put a link to a sample Trello board, which you can check out.